I'm Kathy Crendel, President at Otterbein University, and I want to welcome you today to Otterbein Spotlight. I have some guests with me today to talk with us about a new idea at Otterbein, um, a living and learning center focused on the topic of leadership. So my guests today are John Kengla, Patty Wilson, and Kate Lehman. They've all been instrumental in putting this Living and Learning Center together. Um, this is revolving around a freshman year seminar. It's the first class that students take at Otterbein. And Kate has been uh, sort of the glue that holds all of this together in terms of planning programming that adds to the content area, the specific courses on leadership as part of the freshman year experience at Otterbein. So we're going to talk about this idea of a living and learning center. And Kate, since you sort of got this off the ground, um, I guess I'll have you define what is a living and learning center. Let's start with that. Sure. Um, a living learning center, really, you can define it in lots of different ways, but the core definition is really where you pull students together around some sort of common academic experience and they share a living community. So in, in the way that we have built the Le Living Learning Center, it's students who are in one of three classes, but they're all living in the same residential complex together. So it's basically connecting their living experience with their learning experience. Okay, so then let's go to the mm -hmm. learning part of this. Yeah the in the class uh, kind of part of it. So Patty, what's your course about? I know it relates to leadership, but just give us a couple sentences on what it's about. Um, the course that I teach is discovering and developing your strengths. And um, the course itself focuses on helping students understand a little bit more about themselves, themselves as leaders, themselves as community members, and how they fit in the larger community, not only at Otterbein, but um, in the world. Okay, all right. And John? And my class, class is called uh, Leadership Pathways. So we, we look at leadership patterns, leadership models. We, we actually um, design the course around the, a, a relational leader, leadership model. And the students, in, in addition to uh, le leadership, is in, in, in addition to leadership, the idea of personal development is terribly important. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're doing personal development, self-assessment, as they look at leadership principles and skills. Mm -hmm. And then they practice those leadership skills in a mentoring program that we have. Okay, so let's talk about that idea of, of um, kind of introducing them to these topics and that awareness, self-awareness, self-assessment kind of piece. So um, part of this course is really to introduce students to Otterbein. So just from your assessments of them so far, I know we're a little bit of the way into the semester, but when they arrive on campus, do you think they have a pretty good sense of themselves? I've been, I've been really impressed. This, I've just been teaching first-year students for the last couple of years. I was teaching mostly juniors and seniors for a long time. And I've been really impressed how confident they come, how confident they are when they come in, how, what, what their experience, many of the students have done service learning experiences. They have a sense of dedication, a sense of service, a sense of world responsibility. And I, I find them to be very, um, very confident and, and ready to move, move along. Uh, they, they're, they're also willing to learn. Yeah, okay, great. Patty, how about your kids? I, I would agree with John in that I think they're, they're confident, they're, they're ready to move on. They're just not sure where they're gonna go. Okay. Um, I think um, they do bring a lot of experience with them and I've noticed a difference between um, teaching the class this year and teaching the class last year and then even before that I taught it as an experimental class. This year's group I think because they're part of this living learning community right. we see a little bit different student um, who comes with who mm -hmm. chose to be in this right. area mm -hmm. so they have a little more um, a, a little more focus on what they want to do um, but I have found in just the surveys that my students have done they've they've been kind of excited to find out that maybe there is a, a name for what it is they do or they have a, f a little better feeling that it's it's okay to have the strengths and the talents that they do that can fit in with um, the other people in the class mm -hmm. because they're confident in themselves they just aren't sure about mm -hmm. that group process. Mm -hmm. Yes and I haven't made it over to the residence hall since they did this but I guess they each have their strengths exactly mm -hmm. on their door yep. yeah. so you can your miss independence or <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, well, great. Well, so, Kate, let's go back then to, we've got the learning piece, we've mm -hmm. got the living piece. Mm -hmm. 
What would we typically expect the goals of this sort of com combined sure. living and learning center? What are some of the value-added mm -hmm. experiences? What is it we expect to achieve yeah, with this? Absolutely. Well, I think in many ways we really did hope to really capitalize on that relationship and community building for the students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, oftentimes, much as, as John and Patty both said, you know, students do come to us with kind of a set of interests and experience. And oftentimes college is one of the first times they can actually affiliate themselves with people with those shared interests and experiences. And so I think especially with this, we, you know, we have 60 students who are all interested in this topic of leadership. Now, they may be interested in, in, in all kinds of different ways, and they may have experienced it in different ways, but the reality is it's a shared interest, and so they immediately get to be a part of a smaller group of a community that, you know, they see people that share those interests and experiences. So our hope is that, you know, they, they you know, affiliate with students who have those shared interests quicker, um, that they can kind of um, fast track, if you will, that experience of learning about that interest, where as other students, you know, they may be interested in topics, but they may not be in a situation where they can really, really dig in. So the hope is that they can hear. Um, and again, just really maximizing that experience that they're having, that it's not just living, that it is really, you know, taking their classroom, what they're learning in each of your three classes, and really talking about that at midnight or, right. you know, um, late into the night when they're working on a paper together. And it really just builds relationships and, and really enhances what they're learning in the classroom. Yes, I should mention that I teach one of these yeah. courses as well. <laughs> I sort of skipped over that. It's hard to mm -hmm. ask myself questions. Yeah. But yes, I do teach um, mm -hmm. one of these freshman seminars, and um, the topic of mine is really around issues of, of women in leadership. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's been, this is my second year as well. Yeah. And Patty, I wanted to ask you, you said you taught this as an experimental course, mm -hmm. and then last year, yeah. and that was the first time we did the freshman year experiences as right. part of the new curriculum. But what do you see as the difference this year in terms of the student engagement, in terms mm -hmm. of the kind of the quality level of the discussion? Um, well, I, I see them um, I see them coming in as, as I said, confident uh -huh. um, and a little more sure of their majors okay. this time. Um, and also I think their willingness to communicate with each other in the group. And I think that comes from living together. Mm -hmm. They right, know each other right. a little better because I hear them talking about, oh, I saw you over in the dorm and we, you know, let's go to lunch, let's hang out. Whereas before, the only time my students would see each other was in that class. Right. Mm -hmm. And now they have made connections with the faces. Mm -hmm. And so they, they see each other a lot more on mm -hmm. campus and they recognize mm -hmm. each other. So when they come to class, they're willing to sit and have a one-on-one -on -one with another student. Whereas before it was just like, Okay, I, <laughs> what are we going to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. now they, they actually can carry on conversations, and we're really only in week six. Yeah. So I see that happening a lot sooner mm -hmm. with this group than I have in the past. Great. Well, now I know. Um, can I add to that? Sure, go ahead. Because my students, we meet at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh -huh. which is early for students, especially if, and you know, I, I get emails, I, they'll send me a paper, a question at 1 o'clock in the morning. And um, they come in. And you're sitting right at your terminal waiting to answer. Sometimes. <laughs> Either that or I'm up really early looking at it. So um, uh, the, they come in as a group in the morning, laughing mm -hmm. and loud uh -huh. and happy to be with one another. They're, they're talky, and we, I get them to sit down, and then we are able to, to have an enhanced discussion about whatever we start to, mm -hmm. to talk about. So you've sensed that difference this year absolutely, as well. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. And, and this is a group, I have to say, of high-performing students for yeah. the most part. Mm -hmm. These are, these are what, not, not only are they committed and do they have a sense of self-confidence and a sense of direction, but they are high-performing students. Yeah, I, I must say my, my students are great this year, too. They, they just seem ready to sort of jump. I mean, they're yes. not. So let's go to those okay. out-of-the-classroom experiences okay. for a minute. Um, so the ropes course, the yeah. team building mm -hmm. course. Kate, you might talk about why you decided to do that. That yeah. was something that you organized. Absolutely. Well, that's exactly, you know, I'm loving hearing what you're saying because it, that's the goal, um, is that when you build that community, then they do excel more in the classroom. And so we did. We, we built a series of activities that started with even a kickoff event during New Student Week. So during the time that all the students are coming together to get to know one another, we had a, an, a kind of an exclusive event for this group just to signal to them at that point that it was special and they were about to embark on something unique. And the first major activity that we did as a group out of class was a high ropes and initiative um, course, which was here in Westerville, a um, place called Summit Vision, which did a great job with the students. But um, it really was. It was the first time to have them across the courses together because they had been spending so much time as a group. Um, but it was across the courses, and they did. It was all about challenging themselves and facing their fears and working together to achieve accomplishments. And I think we're seeing the results of that at this point. 
Yeah, I mean, my students, I, you probably were having them do reflective papers as yes. well on some of these experiences, and they really, I, I, I read several this past week where they talked about they didn't think they could do certain things, but it was the support of the mm -hmm. group that made yeah. them feel confident mm -hmm. enough to go ahead and step yeah. off that jump Yeah, off I say jump platform. off the top of a telephone pole, for example. <laughs> yeah, that, that was an example that appeared fairly regularly. <laughs> yeah. so. um, okay, so mm -hmm. if I am a prospective student, mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting in high school and I'm trying mm -hmm. to decide um, where I want to go and what I want to do, mm -hmm. why would the idea of a living and learning mm -hmm. center, do you think this is something that uh, for, a co uh, for a high school senior, mm -hmm. do they understand that value proposition, that value added? Is there, how do we convey this mm -hmm. to students? Mm -hmm. uh, Anybody I, can jump in I, on I that. I think that one of the, I mean, we've talked about how they, 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 they cluster in a sense. And then I have students in there, I have, I have one student who sort of takes care of the group. I have another student who um, sometimes interprets what the group is. Then I have another student who'll <laughs> say, who will be, got, yeah. who will be critical of what's, <laughs> right. of what I, and even write me an email, John, I think we should do it this way. Um, <laughs> and so, and that's, that's just a marvelous. But I, I think what, I think what can happen is that there's quite a transition from high school to college, right. no mm -hmm. matter how well mm -hmm. high school students are prepared. And these students have been prepared. We have to thank the, their high schools. But I think that they provide immediately with the structure we have built around the Living and Learning Center mm -hmm. and also with this group activity, an amazing mm -hmm. support system so that they're looking out for each other, they're studying together, right. they're maybe staying up too late and chatting, but that's <laughs> part of that first year right. experience and part of the dormitory experience. Mm -hmm. So I would suspect that, that they're likely to, we're likely to have a better rate of success, mm -hmm. that they're going to have a better rate of success. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Either, but, either I, of you want to add well, something? I, I have a son who's a freshman in college, right. so I, I can kind of see where uh, many of these students are. Uh -huh. And I've been asked, you know, do you see your son in these students? And I, I can honestly say that I, I kind of, I do, because I hear him talking about, you know, the transition. And so when I come into class then, the students, I hear them talking about these similar mm -hmm. things, but they do have that built-in support because the person next to them right. lives right down the hall from them. Mm -hmm. And so they, they understand what they're going through. Mm -hmm. So they have that as a, that support group um, with them. I, you know, as a, as a parent, I think this kind of community, this kind of center, living learning mm -hmm. center, gives your students that sense of belonging from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right, and I really think that's probably the biggest transition students have mm -hmm. to make when they come to college is where do I fit in? Right. And we've given them that group. You know, mm -hmm. athletic teams kind of do that, the marching mm -hmm. band, mm -hmm. those kind of programs will kind of do that mm -hmm. for students. And this is the same kind of program. It mm -hmm. gives them that built-in, mm -hmm. not only student support, but faculty support, which right. I think is even more important mm -hmm. for right. them. And, and part of what our, the whole freshman year seminar mm -hmm. does, not right. just our courses, yeah. but mm -hmm. allows those students the opportunity to work with faculty. And we don't want them to only stay in these groups. Right. Mm -hmm. So as I look at, as I always look, look at what some of my students are doing, I'll see one in, in, across campus, and that student's joining this community. And, and I think they, I think they start to branch out. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not stuck mm -hmm. in that group. So right. They start to branch out. They're very comfortable as they move into, into, into new areas where they, where they get to, ex, mm -hmm. in a sense, explore themselves outside their mm -hmm. learning, learning center group. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So they get sort of the small group, but also and then they, the Then they branch out and they branch mm -hmm. out easily. <clears throat> right. Well, the, um, Patty mentioned the, the whole notion behind this um, freshman year, first year mm -hmm. um, seminar and experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. just so people... We've done a number of shows um, on the issue uh, and the opportunities that were created with the mm -hmm. transition to semesters and mm -hmm. the new curriculum. Yeah. And we talked about the various elements, but the, the first year experience um, courses are interesting because they, they represent our integrative studies approach. Mm -hmm. They represent our direct experience, the experiential learning piece. Mm -hmm. um, they really do try to stretch students in terms of going out and experiencing things mm -hmm. they've never experienced through mm -hmm. co-curricular. So that we might just talk about that as an orientation mm -hmm. program, the purpose and the thought behind that. So Kate, you probably yeah. led that charge. So yeah. you want to talk us through that a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. Yeah, we, you know, several years ago when we were beginning the planning for semester conversion, um, one of the things we really picked up on, and I, I, almost everyone here was around those early conversations, but we really said there were a couple of things. We wanted to intentionally 
introduce students to the services and resources on campus that you know it's easy at an orientation you give them brochures you talk about it but there's something about really embedding it within the context of a course that makes it really powerful for students we also really wanted to introduce students, I think the actual language of our goals is to the richness and rigor of their Otterburn education. So helping them understand what they were going to experience over the next four years so that they would really want to dive right in and really understand what the importance and value of what their classes would be like over the next three and a half years. Um, and so that was the goal is to really create a first year experience that really did assist the transition of our students into our campus community, both academic, social, um, even highlighting the community resources um, right. within the Westerville community as well. Yeah, so the first Friday, mm -hmm. they go uptown, do scavenger yep. hunts, exactly. they go to businesses. Yep. Um, obviously, Summit Vision mm -hmm. is a local Westerville exactly. business, so mm -hmm. we do that kind of orienting. Mm -hmm. I, I know I had several students write about some of them had never been to a play before, so they mm -hmm. went to see Noises mm -hmm. Off. Some of yep. them had never been to an art exhibit or mm -hmm. a musical performance, mm -hmm. so they, they then they mm -hmm. reflect on that, and yeah. it, it helps them kind of become a part of the Audubon community mm -hmm. in a different kind of way, in ways that they might not have mm -hmm. experienced previously. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I guess I'm always impressed at the, they do take some, they do stretch, they do, they do yeah. take some risks. And yeah. it's, it's always really interesting to see mm -hmm. them when they first do that. Yeah. So and, and they learn to understand the importance. One of my favorite pieces of feedback, like you said, last year was the first year. And, you know, we asked students a lot about the impact of the program. And one of my favorite things a student said is that they actually read their email after the class because they said that, they knew there was so much valuable information out there. Right. And even though they may not choose to go to all those events, they said, but I know that it's in my email and I, I don't delete it right away. And I thought, you know, that's a small step, but it really illustrates that we're helping students understand that there's a, a broader community out there around them. Well, and I, I listened to one of my students who's not, another student who's not part of my living, uh, learning community uh, group. And I heard her say that the only school that she'd applied to was Otterbein. She wanted a small school in Ohio, in the Columbus area. And my sense is that 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 that's, that notion of 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 a, of, a, of a small, close community is so powerful. Not only within our little learning community, because that 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 only enhances those those areas. Mm -hmm. right. But Otterbein provides that close knit close-knit relationship not only with with students with faculty and then the, the and then the particular idea of learning in an integrated fashion mm -hmm. right that's that's right at the center of our mm -hmm. core so mm -hmm. so they're learning about themselves even as they learn about history or as they learn about leadership mm -hmm. or they learn and, and that's that that just doubles down on all the things that we want them to do and mm -hmm. this and this is simply becomes a wonderful centerpiece for all of those other all the aspects of a wonderful Otterbein education. Right, and one piece, I guess I just thought of another piece of the, uh, the, um, the FYS program, mm -hmm. the freshman um, experience program, and that is the peer mentors, the mm -hmm. role of the peer mentors. Yes. So yeah. I know you feel very strongly about I do. how valuable I do. the peer mentors are, but explain what the peer mentors do. Well, the peer mentors are, 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 there to, are, are there to do actual presentations. My, 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 my peer mentor worked, uh, did a presentation on, on the Strength Finder. I've got a peer mentor doing work on study skills, some of the things that duplicate the, um, the co-curricular mm -hmm. events. And then my students are in the class are actually doing mentoring. So it all matches right. together. So they're, mm -hmm. they're being mentored and then they get a chance to start to mentor. Mm -hmm. And so the education becomes, you know, the teacher, it's, it's really, it's really a wash between who is the teacher and who is the <laughs> yeah. learner. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and that's, I guess that fits my style of teaching anyway. <laughs> so um, so I, I think that's, and I, and I suspect that's also a, a hallmark from, of Otterbein University. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. Well, and, and they, as you said, John, the relationships are so important, yes. and we have the numbers that make that possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. And I, I can tell you from talking with alumni, story after story after story about mm -hmm. that, the way in which one faculty member or one staff member mm -hmm. sort of focused on that student and helped mm -hmm. them, you mm -hmm. know, kind of find well, their passion. Find I, their I don't want to dominate, but we, we've, always, we've always struggled with We've always wondered about how, whether students were getting what Otterbein is and what our curriculum mm -hmm. is. Right. And, and sometimes our surveys of, of alums show after, sometimes afterwards right. they get it, and this is the part they appreciate. Right. I think we're doing a better job now yeah. of, of, of having them have this consciousness as they're going through it so yeah. that they can actually be thinking about 
what they're learning as they're learning it and all of these other effects. Right. Yeah, that, I think, that makes a better experience. Yeah, I think it probably is more explicit now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, part of it is, I mean, we all know from doing our course syllabi, we have to be so explicit yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> about yes, yes, you know, yes. how we're fulfilling That's each right. of these learning yeah. outcomes yeah. and how we're going to do it and mm -hmm. what it means. Mm -hmm. And it does make you, I think, more conscious. Mm -hmm. It's not just content you're trying to impart, but it's mm -hmm. part of the total experience. Yes. Yes. And that, I think, makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing, I, I had a kind of an instance happen in my class this past week where my peer mentor, um, who is a leadership minor, was doing a the Myers-Briggs, kind of uh -huh. a version of the Myers-Briggs with right. my students. So they all took the Myers-Briggs and their results were turned in and she was presenting the lesson. Mm -hmm. I was listening along and as, as, as I'm listening, I'm looking at their the results. Mm -hmm. And I start to look and I'm tallying up how many I's, how many E's. And out of 21 students who took the survey in my class, I had 21 J's, mm -hmm. which is very it's organized, very yes, strategic. Yes. Mm -hmm. for, and I had to stand up in front of them and say, I'm sorry, because I'm a P. <laughs> and I've realized that I, as a perceiver, I, I make a lot of adjustments and I make a lot of changes, but right. they, were they were very organized. strategic. <laughs> and they are very organized. So they they just laughed because they found that out in six weeks that it's it's okay and that we can work the environment that way but mm -hmm. for me knowing that about my students has helped me as an, as right. an educator mm -hmm. with them too so well i think particularly uh, your course probably does this most explicitly but john maybe yours does as well um, helping them understand that it takes all kinds so mm -hmm. you don't want to be surrounded by people Correct. just like you exactly. <laughs> um, because then you don't do problem solving well you yeah. don't get those differences in perspectives right. and that notion of mm -hmm. using your strengths or your mm -hmm. your particular mm -hmm. um, strong points right. to advance an argument are very well balanced if somebody mm -hmm. across the table from you thinks very differently Correct. so Correct. it's I think the other part of this is and I think we all practice this is this is this is all centered around a learning centered approach as opposed to the a teaching right. approach right. Right. and so that and so the, and that so therefore the students as i said before the roles get reversed lots of times mm -hmm. or they or the students simply mm -hmm. start to teach each other and i step back and be quiet mm -hmm. But that's another part of this, of, of what we are, mm -hmm. and especially if it happens in this, in their first experience, whether it be in, in the learning, in the learning community, mm -hmm. or whether it just simply be with the right. FYS, it's terribly important. Well, I know that was one of the things one of my students wrote about from your mentoring session, the mentoring training session that you did, was you said something to the effect of um, the mentor often learns more than the mentee or the protege. And she said that surprised me because I was worried about having the expertise and the knowledge to be a mentor, and I realized that it really is mm -hmm. a negotiated process that Absolutely. goes both ways and um, I that's a valuable lesson to learn early in life as well <laughs> because I think that my sense is that's the way the world is going to go and that's the right. way the world is going to prosper right yeah no that's there's a, a hidden outcome there the hidden yes. value yes. Out, yes. out there so um, Kate do you think mm -hmm. you're gonna do are you gonna I know this has been intensive. Mm -hmm. Anything yep. that yeah. we do that's new yep. is always intensive. <laughs> yeah. um, and maybe it won't be quite as intensive mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. year, but do you see opportunities for more living and learning? Yeah, right now we're in exploration. And what we're doing is we're much like leadership. We're looking for you know kind of topical areas that students tend to gravitate toward that may have some interesting opportunities. So right now we're looking um, maybe around business because so many of our students are really interested in that. Um, and then also maybe about health and wellness, or we have a large number of students who are interested in sports related field so those are kind of our next phase but I do I think we've just seen really good outcomes we're going to continue building and growing the program great well one dimension of this mm -hmm. we haven't talked about really explicitly yet is the service learning component mm -hmm. that's another piece of the mm -hmm. Otterbein experiential learning the opportunity for community engagement mm -hmm. Patty tell us what you do in your class um, this this semester, um, my students are doing a program with the American Heart Association, okay. and we're the first college and university um, in the United States to do a program called Heart Chase, which is a community-based program to raise awareness um, and funds for uh, about heart disease in the American Heart Association. And so it's going to be on campus on October 27th, and it's kind of a combination of Minute to Win It and The Amazing Race. And so my students have designed the whole uh, campus map. It's all smartphone <laughs> based, it's technology based. And so they're on committees in my class, okay. decide based on what their strength mm -hmm. areas were. There's a publicity committee, a logistics oh. committee, a recruitment committee. We're gonna be mm -hmm. uh, having students sign up mm -hmm. next week in the campus center. So, and then a couple of groups are gonna have to go in front of Senate and speak at Senate oh, next week to them. promote Good. the event. Um, and so, and then each group had to elect a leader 
within their group to be the communicator with the American Heart Association. So um, that's the project we're working on this year. Um, and so it's it's been going very well. It's so. good that they're all good organizers, I yeah. would say. Yeah, that yes. will help. It, it, really, it really is. They keep me on my toes. <laughs> John, how about your, what's your service uh, learning? My students are actually going to be mentoring. And we'll, they're, they've already started. I have an afternoon mentoring program where we bring students here from urban high schools in right. the afternoon, and they've already participated in that on a voluntary mm -hmm. basis. But starting next week, we, the students will be going during class to Mifflin High School and mentoring a group of, in group mentoring, in a group mentoring setting, a group of uh, ninth graders. Mm -hmm. and, they'll, and, they'll, and they will set up, they will, they will plan the workshops and actually uh, provide a, a learning capacity for the, some of the concepts that we're covering in the class about leadership. Okay, so again, they're applying that. They're applying, mm -hmm. absolutely. Exactly it's terribly what they important. learn in the classroom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And my students are doing the same sort of thing with uh, mentoring middle school yes. students. So, mm -hmm. And uh, I always find at the end of the class and as they go through the process, their reflections on those experiences are some of the most valuable yes. because they are taking you know, the conversations mm -hmm. we've had, the speakers they've heard, the experiences they've shared in their own um, time on mm -hmm. campus and then taking it out and seeing what that means when they talk to mm -hmm. a student in the eighth grade who's struggling with identity mm -hmm. issues and mm -hmm. all kinds of things. So yeah. those those are always, mm -hmm. I think, the most, the things they'll carry away with mm -hmm. themselves probably most intimately and, and significantly. Mm -hmm. um, Kate, what would you do differently? Hmm, interesting. Um, I know you'd have the same three instructors. That's exactly right. <laughs> same three. Same. <laughs> you know, I do. I think um, one thing we've started talking about is how to start empowering the students early. And so, even recently, a student made a comment about, "Could we have dinner together?" And so I put that back to the student about, "How about you organize dinner?" Um, so just allowing uh -huh. the students to start practicing their leadership um, skills and strengths early, but. I don't know that there's too much we would change at this moment, you know, okay. I think, um, but trusting the process and letting the students take a little bit of the lead would, I think, is a good thing that yeah. we'll aim for Well, next year. and we'll do some evaluation. Yep. Um, we're already talking with the students about yeah. the experience and how they feel. What about for both of you? I, I, I have other things that I do, so teaching is just something that I'm doing <laughs> in addition to those other things, but to teach as part of a team, has that been really different for you? It's been, it's been great for me to have a support group, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that's always wonderful because you get to share, you get to mm -hmm. learn, you think even, you, you, and, you, and you also get a chance to, to throw an idea out or to, or to talk about something you've done and have other, and you're not sure whether it was a good idea, and, mm -hmm. then, and you get support for that mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. I think it's, it's really wonderful. I mean, and it mm -hmm. starts that same circle of learning mm -hmm. all over again. Um, I, I, I think that's really powerful. Yeah. Patty, have you? Um, I think our ability here, we're planning some events coming up with where we have, you might have a guest speaker where you right. invite my class mm -hmm. students to come. Yeah. Right. And um, we're having a student leader panel. Mm -hmm. And so I invited the other classes to come. Right. Mm -hmm. um, not having classes at the same time has been, yeah. That's has been a things. little bit of a struggle, yeah. but, but we allow these opportunities again for students sure. to right. make choices mm -hmm. and decisions. But I think that kind of has been really nice mm -hmm. that I can have three times the opportunity mm -hmm. for my students to, to to be in programs. Yeah, so. I think we're, there's no lack of opportunities for no. these kids. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I think, I, I don't know about yours, but mine seem to be taking full advantage of yes. it. So. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to thank you so much okay. for joining us today and talking about this. It's an exciting initiative. And of course, the bookend to this is the senior year experience. Mm -hmm. And maybe we should do a, a show about that um, a yeah. little bit later on so that the students get the freshman orientation mm -hmm. to college and then they get the senior orientation as they enter the world of work. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining yeah. us and thank you for viewing with us today. Um, this is Kathy Crundell, president at Otterbein University. You've joined us today for Otterbein Spotlight. Thanks so much for being here.